first serious test of the Giro d'Italia came on day nine with a huge stage in the Apennines, following on from a day racing around Naples, where Thomas again proved he could do it in the mountains 10 years before and then at the seaside. Juanpe Lopez held on to the pink jersey. Leonard Kemner was the closest on GC at 38 seconds. Ryan Tardame at 58 with Simon Yates, the best placed of the serious contenders. The Mayela Massive awaited the Giro Peloton. Blockhouse, a fort established in unification times, home to the Giro d'Italia's ninth stage. It would be a hard start in Isernia. Riders were on the rollers, getting last-minute instructions. Those who got their way back into the GC were hoping to keep their place. And the big favourites, ready for the first important battle. Five categorised climbs with Juanpe Lopez, the 24-year-old from southern Spain, hoping to hang on in one of the last southern stages of the Giro d'Italia. Blockhouse, the mountain that discovered Eddie Merckx as a GC contender in the late 1960s, with an ascent from its hardest side from Roca Morice after the climbing of Paso Lanciano. Up and down all day, almost 200 kilometers as well. Not many harder finishes than this in the Giro d'Italia. 13 kilometers with a maximum gradient of 14%, rarely dipping below nine. It was an upbeat start, to say the least. There was a threat of it really exploding with a couple of big GC teams trying to get riders up the road. Matthew Holmes took the first Valico del Macerone, king of the mountains point. Then it would be the turn of Diego Rosa. He'd been out in a breakaway that didn't amount to much the other day. Today would be a different matter. A crash behind in the peloton saw Peyo Bilbao hit the ground. He needed a few running repairs. It was always going to be a hard day for him after that. Rosa would take maximum points on the second of the categorised climbs of the day. And eventually a group of nine riders established a lead at the front of the race. With around 150 kilometres to go, they had almost six minutes of an advantage. Tesfatsion was involved, but that would soon change. Jonathan Castro Viejo going to work for the Ineos Grenadiers. They were intent on making the race hard. The front of the race kept changing. Drono per Androni Giocattoli were one of the teams with numbers, Tesfazion being joined by a teammate in Sepulveda. But Rosa would soon hit the front again, and he'd take maximum points over Paso Lanciano. That would take him into the King of the Mountains jersey. A nightmare moment followed. Nathanael Tesfazion leading the race, but crashing. There were initial worries for his safety. He was back to his feet, assessed by the doctors, and would be back on his bike but he'd lost the lead of the race. Joe Dombrowski was trying to make his way up, but the breakaway was running out of time. The peloton was hungry for action. Rosa caught Dombrowski, the last to be caught. It was game on in the general classification, with only Blockhouse left to climb. Giulio Ciccone, the first of the big casualties. Wilco Kelderman has suffered a mechanical, and then, with 12 kilometers to go, Simon Yates off the back, his right knee strapped up, still obviously suffering the effects of that crash on Etna. There was almost a crash climbing uphill. Juan P. Lopez with a touch of wheels, forced to briefly stop. He'd be back on his bike, but the Maglia Rosa losing contact with the main group. Richie Port was going to work on the front. The only teammate left for anybody, really. Bora Hansgrohe trying to keep two men in the group, but they've been following. Port set the pace, Carapaz attacked. Balde and Landa immediately the ones to follow. Vincenzo Nibali and Alejandro Valverde have been riding fantastically well despite their advancing years. Domenico Pozzo Vivo in that category too. And they'd only be at 10 seconds with Landa, Balde and Carapaz unable to really make too much of a difference. Juanpe Lopez was battling away. It looked like he was on his way to losing the Maglia Rosa. But there was a little bit of a stalemate at the front. Into the last kilometre, six men would come together. And at the end of a testing ascent of Blockhouse, the final corner was soon upon them, and it'd be Jai Hindley who would lead them up the hill. Carapaz was gaining. Balde was having to come around after he lost positioning on that last corner. Hindley was just about in front, 
and that's how it stayed to the line. Hindley, Baldi, Carapaz with Landa, followed by Almeida and Domenico Pozzo Vivo at his 16th Giro. Jai Hindley winning for the first time since he won at the Giro two years ago. The first victory in his brand new colours. And then look at this. One minute, 46 seconds later, Juanpe Lopez coming across the line and just about holding on to the Maglia Rosa. The performance of the young man's career so far. Hindley taking the bonus seconds. Juanpe Lopez holding on by 12 seconds. Hindley, Balde, Carapaz, Landa and Almeida. Pozzo Vivo, Buchmann, Nibali, Valverde and Ahrensman, the top ten, all separated by less than a minute. Huge moments of celebration, relief and an outpouring of emotion for 24-year-old Juan Pedro Lopez from the south of Spain. Against all the odds, holding on to the Malla Rosa. He leads by 12 seconds now over Joao Almeida, who's previously held the jersey. Balde is on the GC podium. Carapaz, Hinley, Martin and Lander all in the top seven, with Pozzo Vivo, Buchmann and Bill Bao in the top ten. The GC is set. King of the Mountains competition's underway. And Diego Rosa leads by 14 points from Kuhn Bauman. Leonard Kemner is up there as well. The Giro d'Italia takes on its second rest day. When it returns on Tuesday, it'll be stage 10. A stage up the coast of two half, really. Flat along the coastline and then into the Marche, going through Michele Scarponi's hometown of Filotrano before finishing in Iesi with a couple of climbs towards the end. 196 kilometers for stage 10 of the Giro. A different Giro begins now. The GC has had a real shakeout. We've lost some of the big names, but many more are still in contention. Off to week two proper. We'll see you then.